Urgent. My sister's YouTube channel at Renawatif has been hacked. Please be aware of any strange or unusual content posted on her channel as it is no longer under her control. We urge you to subscribe to her new channel, Rena Fiction, to avoid any confusion or misinformation. Thank you for your understanding and support during this difficult time. Hello to all lovers of Lemon Scenes. I invite you all to my boosty so you can watch your favorite Naruto What If stories in complete comfort. A subscription to Naruto Lemon costs $1.04. The first video with a full lemon is already on my boosty channel. Dare. Naruto's POV, excuse me, guys, if you can. Kami, how hard such elementary words are given. A lump rolls up to my throat, it becomes more and more difficult to breathe, tears flow from my eyes, my hands become numb, and my legs can no longer support my weight, Sakura. I hear Sasuke screaming. Heh, but this is one of the few moments when he is sincere in his emotions. I'm sorry, my friend, that I didn't find you earlier, that I couldn't help you before the war. Help him. I will detain them, yes. Oh, Sakura, oh, my dear, you can't help me anymore. Jubi's power is bursting inside me. Even though I'm an Uzumaki, I won't be able to keep his power in this world. No one can. The Sage of the Six Paths was just an exception, and who am I? And who is he? Hold on, Naruto, I'll help you. S Sakura R A, N don't. Why you'll only prolong my, ah, uh, agony. I'm taking Jubi with me. I slowly raise my hand and stroke her cheek. Kami, how my whole body hurts. Out of the corner of my eye I notice that my hand is clad in the white sleeve of the robe of the sages. Previously, it was red and black, apparently, the color of the robe, half consisting of a chakra, was influenced by the chakra of all biju, don't you dare say that. You can't just die like that. You can't. Don't cry, Sakura, don't, you're just hurting me more. I can't stand women's tears, like my father, which my mother often used. How did I know that? When I met the great hermit, I was able to persuade him to summon the spirits of my parents, and they, don't be fools, gave me all their memory and techniques. Thank them for such a generous gift. I I am sorry, Sakura, but I won't live long. Step back. A A A, how it hurts. The body seems to weigh a ton, how difficult it is for me to walk. Most likely, it is the power of Jubi that is pressing on me. It's not easy to be his Jinchuriki, however. Help me get to Sasuke don't you dare get up, you're bleeding from your eyes and ears. Idiot, you wanted to die. The girl screamed, which reminded me of my mother. Sakura, I'm telling you that I don't have much time left, so you better help me get there, Agar. Good, thank you, Sakura, it will be over soon, I will retire soon. How tired I am, Sasuke, step aside. I shouted with all my might. A friend heard and, releasing a wave of fire at the creatures created by Jubi, jumped back to me, what are you doing? You can't fight now, you're very weak. Naruto, go away, we'll manage, let Sakura patch you up, thank you for your concern, friend, but I'm not a tenant anymore, look. Under his perplexed gaze, I showed him my left hand, on which a black fire was burning, Amaterasu. But how? With trepidation and horror at the same time said the friend, this is the efforts of Jubi. I won't be able to hold him for a long time, I'll help him in the last way I can and go to rest, don't you dare say that. Another one, my heart was beating joyfully, threatening to jump out of my chest, thank you for your concern, friend. I repeat to him for the second time, but I am no longer a tenant, so wait here for now, I have to complete one small business. With these words, I touched them with my fingertips, instantly clinging to them the seal of stupor. 
Having somehow created a clone to help myself, I hobble to the monsters frozen in place, who are you staring at, you freaks? With a grin I pronounce, I add up a series of seals. The monsters, having recovered, realize that something bad was about to happen. The first creature that poked at me was torn apart by the direct impact of the chakra, and the rest were destroyed by the chakra chains, breaking out from behind me. Good technique, however. But I stopped, I need to add a couple more seals. Overcoming the pain that seemed to melt the skin on me. And, although it is, the fire spread faster and faster through my body, burning the remnants of already shabby clothes, getting to the skin, meat and bones. I was in a hurry. Here the last seal was folded, and the fire had already burned both legs so that I fell to the ground. The pain was wild, but somehow I was able to pronounce the key word to activate the technique and hit the ground with my right palm. The left hand was already missing by this time. Fortunately, Amaterasu cauterized all the stumps, otherwise I would not have had time to complete the technique, having died of blood loss a minute ago, the art of Uzumaki. Forbidden clan technique, oblivion. I whispered and hung up. I no longer saw my palm fall to the ground. I did not see how the monsters attacked my body, or rather what was left of it and began to tear the flesh, stuffing pieces of meat into their mouths. I didn't care anymore, but my plan worked. Few in paths quickly flowed along the ground, forming bizarre seals, covering everyone I considered enemies, including those raised by Shinobi with the Edo Tensei technique. Seals crawled onto their bodies and covered them from head to toe so that not a single fragment could be seen. Here is the last seal wrapped around the head of Uchiha Madara, who was stopped by Abito Uchiha at the cost of his own life. A second later, the seals flash with a bright light, starting to burn with a blue flame. The end of Naruto's POV. A dead silence reigned on the battlefield. The only sound was the crackling of the flames that burned their opponents. Here's the last monster burned out. The seals placed on Sakura and Sasuke have dissipated. Two teammates immediately fell to their knees, unable to believe what they saw. Well, yes, the sight of your friend being torn to pieces by some creatures and immediately devoured is not the most pleasant sight. A loud howl cut through the silence. This pink-haired kunoichi was rolling on the ground, banging stones with her fists. She was hysterical, unable to stop, only continuing to sob hysterically. The brunette was just sitting on his knees, looking at the bloody puddle that remained of his friend. A pool of blood is all that remains of the hero of the five nations, who saved the whole world from destruction. A week later, today we are gathered here to say goodbye to, I'm not afraid to say this, the greatest man in the history of the existence of great villages. A week ago, none other than the hero of the five nations, Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, the son of the fourth Hokage, Yellow Lightning Minato Namikaze and Bloody Habanero Kushina Uzumaki left us. This man, like everyone who died in this war, did a lot to save the shinobi world. Let's honor their memory with a minute of silence. Said Hitaki Kakashi, the former sensei of Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura, people sank into silence. About 10,000 shinobi were buried in a cemetery created outside of any village. Grave Grave of the Hero was considered by the heads of villages as a tribute to the heroes, burying them in a mass grave, but there was a separate mound of the hero's grave. All the shinobi who survived and a lot of citizens came to say goodbye to him, and the daimyo of the countries were also present, standing silently at the tombstones, bowing their heads, in tribute to the people who died. Many were crying, not hiding their tears. Sakura was one of the first to go to the grave and put flowers, white lilies, which Naruto loved so much, although he diligently hid it from his friends. After Hitaki Kakashi said goodbye to Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke approached the tombstone. After putting the flowers on a small hill, they knelt down on each other. Both silently leaned their foreheads against the tombstone. Sasuke was the first to decide to speak, 
because he saw that his girlfriend simply did not have enough words for it, thank you, Naruto, thank you for everything, friend. Thank you for pulling me out of the abyss of hatred. Thank you for saving us all. Thank you for helping me get back to the village, thank you for everything. We will never forget you. Oh, yes, I think you would be glad to hear that everything is fine with Sakura and we will get married in six months. Ino found solace in SAE, and Hinata agreed to Kiba's courtship. Neji proposed a 10-10, she replied, yes. Rock Lee started hitting on Karen. Shikamaru finally noticed that Tamari was breathing unevenly towards him, and Cheiji fell in love with Kunoichi from the cloud, Karui, it seems. We all realize that we are not eternal and we need to enjoy every minute of our lives, like you. You have never been discouraged, we will follow your example. Thank you for breathing life into me. If it wasn't for you, I would have remained the same stupid and embittered Avenger. Thank you, rest in peace, Naruto's POV where am I? What's wrong with me? I think I'm dead. Yes, that's right, I died, I couldn't stand the pressure of the Jubi Chakra. I'm finally going to see my parents. I wouldn't be so sure about that, young sage. Oh, is that you, old man, aren't you surprised that you met me again? The sage raised one eyebrow. No, I'm dead. I shrugged my shoulders, well, yes, it makes sense. The old man scratched his nose. I got up and looked around. This place again. Here I received the power of my past incarnation, Azura, yes, I was here recently. You're right, Naruto, why do you need me, old man, I have an offer for you that you don't want to refuse, well, surprise me, Rikudo, I'm offering you a second life. From a clean slate, in a new body, but, something I don't like is eloquent, but. In another world. Well, I expected something like that and what do I have to pay for it and what is the world? What will I have to do? Pay? The old man burst out laughing, so much so that my ears rang, what a voice the old man has. I won't demand anything from you. You saved the world, and the more people there are, the stronger I become, so I decided to thank you for your act in this way. What can you say about the world? He's different, that's all, otherwise it won't be so interesting. Live, Naruto, just live for your own pleasure, do what you want, eh, okay. I was about to agree, but stopped in time. Listen, and all my powers, what will happen to them, and Karama? Will he come with me? And the rest of the Biju, Jubi, no, Naruto, they will stay in this world, but don't worry, I'll give you a couple of abilities. It is a pity that my friend will not share this path with me. Well, anyway, he'll be calmer here. Come on, tell me already, what kind of abilities? Well, strength first. There is no chakra in that world at all, so alas, I can't help you with anything. You'll have to learn and develop everything yourself, but I think you're not used to it. Shock is our way. Yes, Naruto, you heard right. Now, instead of air, you will have two elements, fire and lightning. Your stamina and regeneration remains with you, but keep in mind that regeneration remains only as a member of the Uzumaki clan, and even then half-breeds. Of course, it won't save you from cutting off your head, but I think you're not such a fool as to put your head under an enemy sword, am I right? The old man grinned. Well, that's about it. Do you understand everything? Yes, old man, thank you for the chance for a new life, you're welcome, hero. Are you ready? Wait, can I ask you a favor? Hmm, well, try, can you give me the memory of my parents? Why would you do that? It's just that at least this way I can feel closer to them, mmm. Okay, I'll try. A. We'll have to recreate their personalities here, bypassing the Shinigami, but okay, what can you not do for the sake of reincarnating your son? Thank you, Sage. Gratitude will not be superfluous here, since the old man tried, putting my parents' memories into my head, just one moment, what, 
I'll change your character a little, what? What for? How, nothing. Rikudo frowned slightly. You're too kind for Shinobi, it's fraught with consequences that you won't be happy about. And how? The old man stroked his beard and smiled. Well, I'm a god, although I don't advertise it much. In my fic, he will really be a god. Okay, I don't care anymore, do what you know. I wave my hand and immediately realize that someone else's hand has fallen on my head, plunging me into a short-term sleep. I woke up from the pats on my cheeks, well, now you're not so kind, ready to tear veins for anyone, heh. Yeah. It's also more interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that's for sure. Hmm, I feel that something has changed in me, but I can't figure out what. Okay, I'll deal with it later, well, that's it, I did everything I could. The old man theatrically wiped non-existent sweat from his forehead. Are you ready? Yeah, then good luck in the new world, Naruto. Will I see you again? I ask before I disappear, unfortunately, Naruto, unfortunately, Rikudo shook his head with a sad smile, oh, it's a pity. Well, anyway, a new life awaits me. Bye, old man. I managed to wave goodbye to him before the world faded before my eyes, after a while, Rikudo, you brute, may you hiccup in the next world. Where did you put me, you damned brute? Why the hell can't I move, and some water gets into my mouth while breathing? And I can't see anything. Yes, damn you, where am I, what the fuck is this? Why does it hurt me? Ouch, what the hell is this? The light cut through the closed eyes, then a sharp pain in the neck, arms, torso, legs, and all this lasted for at least an hour. Damn, it hurts. Well, finally I was able to open my eyes, and then. Then I just screamed. Wait, why am I screaming? I don't understand anything. Hey, what the hell? which suicide just whipped my ass. Hey, it hurts. I squeezed my eyes shut, and then opened my eyes again, thinking that it was just a bad obsession, but no, some giant was holding me. Or this world is inhabited by giants, or. From what came to my mind, I broke into a cold sweat. No, not that. I looked at my hands. Heck. I turned out to be a baby, a fucking baby. What will you call it? The man who was holding me asked, Jean, Sato Jean, your mother, I say right away, the Piendao family is an author's fiction, so don't then shout in the comments that he didn't have any son or the like, Jean, five years old, wow, damn, it hurts. Agar, old man, I'll get to you, don't whine. The formidable voice of the grandfather and the life-giving kick work wonders. I took off as if stung. Well done, and now we repeat the exercise again, yes, grandfather. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't call me grandpa in training. The man's brows drew together. Yes, Master Piendao, I understand. Theatrically bowing my head, I whisper to myself. Harmful old man what did you say there? Repeat it. Grandfather squinted, and I grimaced, I said that now I will work out this blow again, great, and now the race around the estate. Piendao said when I finished practicing Boken strikes. They didn't trust me with a real sword yet, because they said I was still small. Small, yeah. A young boy with the life and experience of a seasoned killer. My parents' memories are well intertwined with mine, so now I don't really remember how I lived in the past world. There are only skills and knowledge left, but so far I can't put them into practice, because I need to develop my body to a sufficient level, otherwise training will be useless, or even dangerous. That's right, master. Eh, nothing can be done, we need to develop in order to prevent what befell my parents, what happened to them. Everything is simple to the elementary. My grandfather had a son, my father. He quarreled with him to the nines, leaving the house and slamming the door. What was the cause of the quarrel? Girl. 
Mom was a very beautiful woman. Her father couldn't resist her. As I understood from my grandfather's stories, they met secretly, since he did not approve of their relationship, believing that an aristocratic family of average income only wanted to brainwash the guy, and after Piendao's death, take all their wealth. But it wasn't like that. My mother and father loved each other very much, so when my father came to my grandfather and was refused marriage, he quarreled with my grandfather and left home. Father and son did not communicate anymore but I deviated from the topic. The death of my parents was completely unexpected. I was four years old then. Our house was attacked by bandits. My parents were quite rich, after all, one was the daughter of aristocrats, and the second was a brilliant artist whose works were sold for crazy money. I know that one painting was bought by the owner of the fire himself, so our family had enough money for a comfortable life. Well, that's it. Bandits killed my parents, but my father managed to write a letter to my grandfather, and my mother managed to hide me. I don't know why, but the robbers stayed in our house to celebrate. Grandfather showed up after three hours, as he lived only a hundred kilometers away from us. My parents' house stood on the border of the capital of fire, on the seashore, at a distance from other houses. My father loved peace and quiet when my grandfather arrived and saw what happened to his son and daughter-in-law, to be honest, I was sitting in a secret room at the time, but even from there I heard the screams and pleas of the bandits. Grandfather is the greatest sword master in the nation of fire. No one can compare with him in the possession of a sword. The bandits didn't have a chance. After he dealt with the robbers, the grandfather ran into the house. I could hear him running from room to room. When my grandfather entered the room next to which there was a door to my shelter, I quietly opened the door and looked out. Grandfather immediately turned around at the sound. When he saw me, safe and sound, he let out a sigh of relief and knelt down next to me. Looking into my eyes, he asked well, hello, grandson. I'm sorry I didn't come earlier and couldn't save. He stopped here, but I understood everything without words, just hugging him, that, in principle, is the whole story. That's why I want to learn how to protect myself and my loved ones. My father refused to learn sword fighting from my grandfather. I paid for it. He couldn't protect his family. I won't make that mistake. So go ahead, develop. You need to restore your skills point ten years later. I wiped the sweat off my face. I've never laid out like this before. About a year ago, I began to comprehend the magic of fire. What can I say about her? Strong and dangerous magic that does not tolerate weakness and fear. Fire is a self-willed element that requires increased control and assertiveness. If you can't keep the fire in check and lose control, then, everything will be bad, even very bad. Abundant burns all over the body in exhaustion, as a huge amount of fire bursts out from everything that can emit it from the magician, spending all his strength at the same time. I remember the first time I tried to reproduce fire, and then, delighted with the light that appeared on my palm, I lost control, from which it grew to a huge fire, setting everything on fire. It was strange that my fire was not the usual orange-red color, and not even blue. You won't believe it, it was anthracite black. Then, to be honest, I was very scared. I still remember how my grandfather yelled at me and drove around the landfill after recovery. It didn't even help that I could have put him on his shoulder blades for a long time, having restored most of my skills, since then, I have been studying with the best magician of the Fire Nation. I remember the moment when an old friend of my grandfather, the Dragon of the West himself, came to visit us. A retrospective. I trained at the training ground, practicing blows on a dummy. Punches and kicks rained down with great speed. Soon the poor dummy could not stand it and broke in half from the blow. Wiping the sweat from my forehead, I picked up the mug and scooped up some water from the barrel. I specially dragged her here and trained her with cool spring water. After training, you are constantly thirsty, 
and it does not hurt to refresh yourself, because you can arrange a small cool shower, bravo. I heard a voice from the entrance to the landfill. Turning around, I saw my grandfather and another man. Middle-aged, chubby, with a smile of a kind grandfather. Almost all gray, hair braided in the standard hairstyle of the people of fire. He was smiling and clapping his hands as he slowly approached me. I watched him in silence. What can I do, I don't trust any suspicious personalities, even my grandfather's friends. And that this man is his friend, I am 100% sure, since grandfather only lets his closest friends into our landfill, young man, I am impressed with your skills. And the unrepresented man spread his hands and slightly closed his eyes. At such a young age and such strength. Oh, excuse the old man, I didn't introduce myself. The man slapped his forehead. My name is Iroh. Is it an honor for me to meet such a great warrior, General Iroh, or would it be more convenient for you if I called you the Dragon of the West? I bowed to the man in a respectful bow, like a junior to an elder. Ha, huh, what a polite young man. Iroh turned to his grandfather. You have a good grandson, Piendao, and a strong one. He looked at me again. Please, Jean, don't be too officious. I don't like all this, I suffered when I was still the heir to the throne. Do you know my name? Of course. Iroh clapped his grandfather on the shoulder. Old Pai has been buzzing all my ears about you. He said he was proud of you that you would grow up to be an excellent swordsman, Iroh, that's enough. The grandfather was obviously embarrassed that he was shamed and you told me the opposite, old man. I grinned nastily, wanting to annoy my grandfather. That I move like a sack of shit, ahem, that's enough, Jean. Iroh and I looked at each other and laughed. I think we'll get along. Jean, Iroh looked at me seriously. Your grandfather told me that you have a rather, mmm, specific color of fire, am I right? Yes, master. Hmm, won't you demonstrate, okay. I raised my hand and lit a fire in my palm. Looking at Iroh, I saw his eyes widen in amazement. After extinguishing the flame, I took a breath, because for me, even such a manifestation of magic was costly. Heh, that's a surprise. I've never seen this before. The man looked at me slyly. He did not hide my fatigue and slight shortness of breath. Again, I will say that you are a very interesting young man. I think I will help you in mastering your flame, what? That's what I didn't expect. To learn from the dragon of the west himself. That's cool, damn it, yes, you heard right. I'm wondering what will come of you. I am grateful to you, Master. I won't let you down, but I still have training with Master Piendao. Pai, you're so strict. Iroh pretended to roll his eyes. You force your grandson to call himself a master. Let him get used to the rules of decency. Grandfather answered sternly, crossing his arms over his chest. Jean, I've already taught you everything I know. And recently you can already beat me in sparring, so our lessons are over. All you have to do is gain experience in real fights, not sparring, what? Really? If my grandfather and the general weren't here, I'd be dancing with joy, yes, so I can safely let you go with Iroh, in the sense of letting go? I looked at my grandfather uncomprehendingly, indirect. Grandfather put his hand on my shoulder. I've been discussing this with Iroh for a long time. He agrees to take you as an apprentice, but why? I've seen your attempts at magic. And do you remember what happened last time? Yes, I remember it well. The reminder will stay with me for the rest of my life. I have a severe burn on my entire chest, but I can't help but say that it's quite, beautiful, or what? It was in the form of fire, but still, a burn is a burn, don't worry, Jean, no one forbids you to communicate with your grandfather. Iroh said soothingly, okay. 
A slight smile crept onto my face, then go and get ready, we leave in an hour. In the meantime, we'll sit down for a cup of tea and a game of pie show. Two satisfied men left the training ground the end of the retrospective that I've been living with my mentor for a year now. I must say right away that training with my grandfather seemed like heaven to me, compared to what this, this, dragon was doing, the very next day I moved in with him, he made me show everything I was capable of. Iroh was very disappointed. However, so am I. Without fear of burns now, since the best master of fire magic was nearby, I tried to squeeze everything out of myself, but the result made me very sad. The sluggish jet of black flame that burst out of my fist did not even reach the mannequin standing ten meters away from me. Ten fucking meters. Grinning, Iroh showed me how to do it. My jaw dropped at the sight. A huge jet of flame simply burned the mannequin, leaving not even ashes from it. I was shocked, I was inspired. Iroh said that if I tried hard, I could do the same. I wanted to do the same thing, which I foolishly blurted out to him. Well, hell began. This monster forced me to meditate for hours, driving through my inner energy. Fortunately, at least I didn't have any problems with this, since the knowledge and skills in manipulating energy from a previous life rule. But there was a completely different feeling in using magic than in using the chakra. So, I sat and literally breathed fire. Lotus position, inhale through the nostrils, exhale through the mouth. On exhaling, a thick jet of black flame flew out of his mouth. The longer I meditated, the hotter and longer it became. I was making progress, slowly but surely. In about a month, my control and the power of the flame increased so much that I could set fire to a mannequin from five meters away. From just five meters away. It's a shame for a fire mage. But I was not disappointed, but improved more and more in mastering magic. Iroh made me run with huge rocks on my shoulders. After a kilometer, I had to sit down without lowering the stones and exhale each squat flame from my mouth. And such squats had to be done at least fifteen. There were also exercises to hold the flame jet. My record was ten minutes. After that, I just fell off my feet from fatigue. Aero was more pleased with such results. His efforts were not in vain. My fire control skills were getting better and better day by day but one day I was lowered from heaven to earth. His nephew and niece came to see Master Iro. At that time I was practicing my master's signature technique, Dragon's Breath. The magician transforms magic into fire and releases it in a powerful jet from his mouth. Something similar to the Great Wall of Fire performed by Madara Uchiha. I'll be honest. With my black flame color, it looked pretty impressive. But, as it usually happens with me, everything did not go as I would like. The flame jet performed by the master was about 15 meters and about 10 in width, and mine somehow reached 5 meters in length and 2 in width, which made me very sad. I've been working on this technique for about a month now, but I could only increase the range by a couple of centimeters, but the width by a meter. I don't know why I'm doing this. It seems that I invest more magic, but it seems that she loses some of it on the way to the technique, so the technique comes out weaker than it should. And I invest a lot of magic. The master said that I have a huge potential and I just need to constantly practice and increase my control over the possession of fire that I remember once I mentioned lightning, so I was slapped with a couple of hours of jogging in the water with a load of 50 kilograms on my shoulders. I could not understand such a reaction of my sensei to my request to show me the lightning. After that, I never mentioned lightning, but Iroh enlightened me that lightning is the lot of the highest fire magicians who were able to achieve balance in themselves and in their magic. If there is no such balance and harmony, then lightning will simply burn its user. Well, let's go back to our sheep, or rather to the heirs to the throne, who came to their uncle. Iroh received them in the living room of his house, forcing me to be present at the meeting. 
The acquaintance passed, specific. A retrospective, Zuko. Azula. Iroh jumped up to the children, squeezing them in a vice. The kids could only make a strangled squeak. Zuko and Azula looked to be about ten years old, but I knew from Aero that Zuko was actually a year older than his sister, so the kid was fifteen now, and the girl, respectively, fourteen. The kids were dressed luxuriously. Silk planes with gold edging, linen trousers and leather boots. I was blushing, because I was standing in an ordinary cotton shirt and the same trousers, and on my feet I was wearing simple boots made of cheap leather. I was swearing to myself, because I didn't have time to get dressed in more decent clothes, because the master dragged me to meet his nephews right from the landfill, hello, Uncle Iroh. Zuko wheezed. Iroh never let them go, hello, uncle. Azula was already turning blue, but I saved them from being strangled by their own uncle, ahem. I coughed into my fist. Iroh immediately jumped away from the children, who took a breath of air with relief. Zuko looked at me gratefully, but Azula grimaced, uncle, who is this? A neat finger with a sharp nail pointed at me. Ah, this is my student. Jean Sato. Iroh came up to me and slapped me on the shoulder. As before, I was standing like a stone pillar, not counting the moment with a cough, and I remained standing like that, pushing my chest forward, straightening my back and putting my hands behind my back. Iroh just grinned at this performance, a student? The children drawled in chorus. This is synchronicity. Yes. He is the grandson of Master Piendao. The name of the grandfather affected the children as if a tub of ice water was poured out. Stop. The grandson of Master Piendao. Sato. Sato. I've heard that name somewhere before. Zuko muttered, putting his hand to his chin and looking at me thoughtfully, Zuko, you're a fool. Azula grinned and punched her brother in the shoulder with her fist. He hissed at his sister like a cat. This is the son of Arida Sato, a talented artist from whom our father bought the painting. How could you forget that, you leaky head, leave me alone, Azula. Zuko pouted and turned away from his sister, H.I.H. The girl giggled sweetly into her fist, and I caught myself thinking that I had been looking at her for a minute. Shaking my head, I looked at Sensei. What I saw made me choke on air. Iroh leaned on me and stood with an expression like, I know what you were thinking about, who you were thinking about and what you were thinking about her. Having made a brick face, I turned away, and Sensei just giggled nastily, why are we all standing here? Let's go have lunch, aren't you hungry? Iroh went up to his nephews and put his hands on their shoulders. And our bags? Azula looked at her uncle with a question on her face. The servants will take everything away now. Iroh calmly waved his hand and moved towards the dining room. Come on, Jean, I'll introduce you to Zuko and Azula. Closer. And he smiled so ugly. Your mother. Jin, and here we are sitting at the dinner table. To be honest, I'm far from etiquette as I can't stand all these prim scraping and verbiage, but my grandfather hammered into my head the rules of behavior at the table, after all, the heir of one of the most influential families in the nation of fire. So when we sat down at the table, I didn't lose face. After watching Azula and Zuko eat, I grimaced inside. If it was clear from Zuko that he was already tired of sitting and slowly absorbing rice, keeping his back straight and his hands at a perfect 90-degree angle, then Azula seemed to enjoy it all. I've seen her occasionally throw mocking glances at us. It feels like she likes our forced smiles and the cheekbones that come down from them. Soon I got tired of it, so I put the bowl of rice on the table and took a cup of tea. At first, I realized what real tea was only when I came to my master. Iroh was as turned on his tea as he was skilled. I often watched him make tea. It seems to be the usual actions that every person who wants to make tea repeats. But a truly divine drink comes out of the hands of the master. 
Arrow considers it blasphemy to heat the water for tea with his own magic, since then the water gets the smell of magic, and this, I will tell you, is unpleasant. Will it be pleasant for you to drink tea with the smell of ozone? That's what I'm talking about. Raising the mug to my mouth, I glanced at Zuko, who, seeing my actions, followed my example and set aside his bowl of rice. The prince also reached for a mug of tea. Grinning to myself, and leaving the same mask of impenetrability on my face, I took a sip. The burning liquid rushed into the stomach, the tongue tasted, and the nose caught the amazing aroma of simple jasmine tea. I stretched this mug of tea as long as possible, rolling small portions in my mouth. Aero, who was looking at me, just grinned. He already knew how attached I was to this drink. Ahem, the owner of the house coughed into his fist. Azula, Zuko, how is your study in fire magic progressing, I'm fine, uncle, thank you. Azula answered, smiling sweetly, and I again caught myself thinking that I was admiring her. But Zuko has problems, mmm? Iroh turned a questioning look at Zuko, who shot at his sister with evil glances, I'm not good at controlling fire. The guy said confusedly, with his eyes on the floor, hmm, Iroh stroked his beard. Jean has exactly the same problems. What? Zuko looked at me in disbelief. And what am I, and I'm nothing, as I drank tea, so I drink, yes, he has too strong a flame, so he cannot control it at a high level, often losing control and the power of the flame, pft, loser. Azula muttered softly to herself but he is very good at fencing and the strongest melee I have ever seen. Iroh continued, pretending not to notice the taunt released by Azula, pf, the girl snorted. Mages are stronger than some kind of a melee, dot I sat there and didn't interfere. It was more interesting for me to drink tea without noticing the dispute between my uncle and niece. Azula, do you want to check it out? That's a bug. Iroh gave me a big pig. Come on. Azula got up from her seat and looked at me defiantly. Get up, I didn't understand. What kind of tone is that? Of course, I understand everything, a royal person, but to talk to an aristocrat, and to an elder, in the end, in such a tone. This is too much. Okay, I'll have to teach you a little lesson, girl. I'll teach you to respect your elders. All right, princess. This treatment hurt the girl, and I just grinned to myself. Azula let out a short growl and confidently headed out of the dining room. But when she saw that I didn't move, she snorted irritably. Are you coming? Or did you get cold feet? A nasty little smile crept out on her face. I just looked at the master questioningly. Iroh nodded his head at me and also stood up. Zuko followed his actions, come on. I said shortly and headed for the exit from the dining room. But on the way to the training ground, Azula turned in the direction of the living rooms. I looked after her, what? The girl snorted. I need to change, okay. We are waiting for you at the training ground. She walked away, proudly lifting her nose and keeping her back straight. I just grinned. A third-person view how can I sit next to him and not blush, lunch had already started and it was very funny for Azula to watch the family trying to look like intellectuals. But one young man still attracted her. Jin. And he's funny. The girl was so thoughtful that she hardly heard her uncle's question, Azula, Zuko, how is your study in fire magic progressing, I'm fine, uncle, thank you. The girl answered, smiling sweetly, and suddenly caught Jin's lingering gaze. However, she pulled herself together so as not to be embarrassed right there and continued. But Zuko has problems, the brother looked at his sister with an evil grin, but Azula was amused. The uncle continued to torture Zuko, but then the name of Piendao's grandson sounded, which attracted the girl's attention. When she heard that he had the same problems, she couldn't help but let go of the barb. Uncle immediately began to provoke her Azula, 
Do you want to check who is stronger, magicians or melee fighters? Azula, as a fiery girl, could not ignore such a challenge and immediately agreed. Jin's princess treatment hurt her, but at the same time the young man became even more attractive. She moved into the room to change clothes, and the young, and not so young, people went to the landfill, since lunch, Azula had been chasing thoughts about Gina in her head and could only voice them alone with herself melee, pft, harder, pft. As if he himself doesn't know what magicians are capable of. But he's like that, like that, the girl couldn't find the right word, silent, but at the same time courageous or something, the girl felt like she was about to blush again, but immediately reproached herself, since it was time to go out, Jin. Jean, a few words. Iroh beckoned me with his finger, sending Zuko ahead. Master? Jean, don't give it your all. Iroh frowned and looked at me sternly. There was concern for his niece in his gaze, yes, master. I won't hurt her, I'll just roll her around the landfill so that she doesn't let her playful tongue loose in my direction anymore, well, that's good. Be gentle with her. The master chuckled and headed out of the house. I will, master. I whispered, following the master, when I arrived at the training ground, the first thing I did was take off my shirt, exposing my inflated torso. Of course, I left my boots and trousers in place. It is not for the heir of Master Piendao to run around in his underpants in front of the children of the fire master. I'm ready. It was heard from the entrance to the landfill. Everyone turned there at once. Azula was standing at the entrance, dressed in white training clothes, a white shirt buttoned up, white trousers tightened with a leather belt and tight-fitting legs, women's combat sandals, and her hair was pulled into a high ponytail. I admired it. Damn, again. I already feel like a pedophile. Although, there was something to admire. A pretty face, slender legs, a chiseled figure, a small but neat chest, which was quite large for her age. Then I remembered Sonade. That's it, I didn't look there anymore, great. Iroh was positively beaming. Fighters, in the middle. Greet each other. Azula and I went to the center of the training ground and politely bowed to each other. His left hand was clenched into a fist, and his right hand was leaning against his fist, dispersed. Iroh commanded. We obeyed his order, turning our backs to each other and sat down on one knee. I'm explaining the rules. The fight is conducted until one of the fighters is knocked out, or until I consider that the fight is overdue to the advantage of one of the fighters. Is that clear, a nod? Ready? Another nod. Let's get started, instantly getting to my feet and turning around, I saw Azula already running at me. Quick, I didn't expect this. Getting ready to deflect the blows. I stood up in a stance. This fighting style I copied from my father's last body. Minato was an outstanding melee fighter. The right leg is pulled back, the left is bent at the knee and put forward. Both hands were positioned in the direction of the opponent. In some ways, this rack resembled the racks of the air nomads I had seen in books. I was completely relaxed. Having worked out the strategy by which I would act, I hurried to put it into practice, Azula was already within striking distance when I smoothly stepped aside, letting her pass. The girl clearly did not expect this, and ran forward a couple of meters by inertia, but then quickly came to her senses and turned to me. But I was not standing at a post and was already in a squat to make a cut, which I succeeded. Azula fell on her back, but quickly rolled to the side, preventing me from kicking from top to bottom. Turning in her direction, I struck a light blow aimed at the head, but the girl was able to dodge and tried to conduct a counterattack to the body, from which I left with a movement similar to a leaf in the wind. With my back to her, I brought my hands back and caught her under the chin. A little tensed, I threw her over me to, ouch. The girl fell on her stomach. The blow knocked all the air out of her that I didn't say anything. 
Standing in a pose for the start of the fight, I beckoned her to the beginning of the attack. Growling, Azula rushed at me, but at the last moment turned 90 degrees and tried to come to my side. All this happened so quickly that I almost missed the blow, but the reflexes worked out over the years in both this and that lives. Having intercepted her leg, with which she attacked me in the air with a U-turn, I jumped up and tried to hit her, but I couldn't. I just couldn't, so when the girl's face was only a few centimeters away, I just bent my leg at the knee, so she flew in front of her without hitting Azula herself. The girl looked so stunned that she stopped in place, doing nothing. Her eyes were wide with the realization of what could have happened now. I was tall and muscular, under 90 kilograms in weight, so with such a blow I could easily either break her jaw or send her into a deep knockout, adding to this a concussion, which I did not want at all. I didn't want to spoil such a beautiful face, and even more so to swear with Master Iroh. He would have rotted me in training if something had happened to his niece through my fault. Azula was still in the deepest shock, and I still hadn't let go of her leg, so taking advantage of the moment, I pulled her towards me. The girl couldn't stand still. The pose turned out to be quite funny. Since I was much taller than Azula, I was able to lift her by the leg in such a way that she almost reached her head to the ground, but her hair was already sweeping the sand of the polygon. When she came to her senses, she pouted and crossed her arms over her chest. Soon Iroh and Zuko came to their senses, laughing loudly. I also chuckled softly, but the master and the brother of my victim were having a good time. They laughed so hard that Zuko even grabbed his stomach and sank to the ground, and Iroh threw his head back and wiped the tears in his eyes. Let me go. Azula said softly. Okay. I just opened my hand. The girl collapsed to the ground, hitting her coccyx painfully. Tears of resentment appeared in her eyes, which she immediately wiped away with her sleeve. Well done, Azula. Iroh said happily, still chuckling, what? The girl rolled her eyes and looked at her uncle as if he was crazy. You held out against that monster for a minute. Iroh went over to his niece and helped her up. My best soldiers, whom I invited, could not resist even thirty seconds. And you could. Shaking off, said Iroh. Well, with the soldiers and the time of their defeats, he overdid it. The best ones lasted about two minutes, but then you can cheer up the girl, what? Why did she go all wrong with that, what, well done? Iroh said again and turned to Zuko. Nephew, don't you want to try, uh, no, thanks, I'll refrain. Zuko backed away, but came across a fence enclosing the landfill, Zuzu, chickened out? You recovered quickly, Azula, I. The kid pouted. Yes, I'm going to give him such. A minute later, boom. Zuko flew to the fence and sprawled on the ground, being unconscious. I didn't stand on ceremony with him as much as I did with Azula. He's a future warrior of the Fire Nation, so let him get used to getting punched. When the boy disconnected, Azula was already laughing, but she quickly fell silent under my disapproving gaze. I did the right thing, because I was only joking with her, but I treated Zuko much more severely. Approaching the guy with a mug of cold water, I pour the contents on him. Zuko jumps up on the spot with a scream, furiously waving his fists, but quickly calms down, as Azula pours a second mug on him. Iroh laughed again. Azula laughs softly, covering her mouth with her palm, I just look with a smile at the guy who started to boil. Water began to evaporate from his clothes, and fire appeared in his hands. The laughter immediately died down. Azula retreated to a distance, and Iroh tensed. Come on. Beckoned him invitingly, Gur. The boy with a growl sends a jet of flame in my direction, from which I dodged, just stepping aside. Yes, I had to make a solid step, since his control over the flame is clearly better than mine, which confirms his volley of fire. The jet was twice as wide and longer than mine. 
Having decided to show my teeth, I light my flame on my right hand. Azula looks at me with admiration and disbelief. Iroh tensed up even more, but he's not doing anything yet. It's nice, so he trusts me. Concentrating, I send my volley of fire towards Zuko. The flame, black as night, quickly melts the sand right on the spot where the crown prince was sitting a second ago. And you can't deny him dexterity. Quickly unscrewed from the place of impact. Wow. The boy said, forgetting that he had just attacked me. The sand has melted, my fire, I don't know why, is black. It is many times more powerful than usual, but it is incredibly difficult to control, but it's still cool. A happy smile crept onto Zuko's face. And Azula's fire is blue, really? I looked at the girl questioningly. Yes. She was standing with her hand behind her back, smiling sweetly and holding a blue fire on her hand. Who did not understand the pose, look at the avatar of the group, and better yet, subscribe to it, smiley face. I was just admiring it, so I had to pull myself together. Azula, seeing my hesitation, grinned and looked at me with superiority. A third person view, I'm ready. It was heard from the entrance to the landfill, Azula came out and felt that all eyes were on her. But only one was important to her. The young man stared at the girl with fascination, and at this time she tried not to look into his eyes, because then she would simply not be able to take her eyes off his powerful torso. And God forbid he notices it, the fighters greeted each other. They went to the center of the training ground and politely bowed to each other. His left hand was clenched into a fist, and his right hand was leaning against his fist. In Azula's thoughts, a running line was spinning, oh, how pretty he is. But you can't get distracted from the main thing. The girl thought. Dispersed. Iroh commanded. The opponents obeyed his order, turning their backs to each other and sat down on one knee. With the last given command, the girl ran at Jean, who clearly did not expect such a turn of events. Azula was rushing at the enemy, but he dodged at the very last moment, forcing her to run a couple more meters. She turned around and immediately got hooked by Jean. Azula still couldn't get her mind off him. His mighty torso, muscles that showed even more during the fight, veins, all this just did not really allow him to concentrate. But Azula tried. She rolled over, but still almost got hit on the head. After an unsuccessful attempt to launch a counterattack into the young man's body, he threw her over himself and forced her to flatten on the ground. The girl immediately tried to stand up and prepared to attack. Jean beckoned to her. Azula, growling, ran again, but this time she tried to come in from the side and strike a quick blow, but, the reflexes of the fighter made themselves felt, the blonde wanted to deliver a heavy kick to the jaw, but changed his mind, realizing that if he got hit, he would not be well. The guy understood that after such a blow, the girl could get seriously injured and hold a grudge, which he did not want at all, the leg flew past, and the girl stood in shock, not daring to move a single muscle. Since her leg was still in the young man's hands, he pulled her slightly towards him. Azula was left hanging in the air, and her hair dragged along the ground. She thought about him again, but immediately came to her senses and hissed to Jean let me go he just let go of his leg and the girl was lying on the ground again. She did not expect this at all, thinking to herself that someday they will be counted again, Iroh allegedly praised the girl, although he just wanted to cheer her up, and immediately offered to spar Zuko. He was about to refuse, but Azula set him on fire with her taunts and a minute later, the poor guy flies almost across the entire playground into the fence. Azula laughed, but was immediately silenced by Jin's disapproving gaze. He looked quite huge and menacing, but at the same time was insanely beautiful in her eyes. She couldn't tear herself away from their fight, Jean poured a mug of water on Zuko, and Azula followed suit and repeated the same thing. The young man did not like it very much and at the call of the genie, he released a jet of flame. 
In response, the second decided to do the same. Azula froze in admiring expectation. The coal black fire broke out. Azula couldn't take her eyes off that flame. It fascinated, called to drown in it, to dissolve completely, this fire turned the girl on, ignited passion in her. Just like his master. She was thinking, but suddenly she heard her name, Azula's fire is blue. Zuko informed Jean, really? He looked at the girl questioningly, she modestly released a small flame and smiled sweetly, because Jean was looking at her. And she was looking at him and noticed how he pulled back his admiring gaze. The girl liked it and she grinned in his direction, Jin, after two more weeks, Azula and Zuko got ready to go home. The send-off was modest, and who was there to see them off? I and the master, servants do not take into account. The children of the owner of the fire were standing at the threshold of the mansion and talking to their uncle, and I, what am I? He stood on the sidelines and did not shine. Although we became good friends during this time, but I did not want to get into the conversation of relatives. If they want to, they will come themselves. Well, he croaked. Azula was approaching me. Jean. The girl hesitated. Apparently, the prepared speech was forgotten, Emm, come and stay with us. The girl lowered her gaze to the ground, and the tips of her ears, visible from under the dark strands of hair, turned red. I, we will always be glad to see you. I wouldn't mind studying with you again, and I'd like to introduce you to your father. He would appreciate your skills, okay, I'll think about it. I must not admit that I was glad of such an invitation, yes. Azula looked up at me. It is worth saying that Zuko was taller than Azula by half a head, well, I'm taller than Zuko by a head, so the girl looked at me from below. Okay, Azula. Are you coming? Or do you want to stay with Jean? Zuko grinned nastily. TC, I'll remember that for you, you little brat, I'm coming, Zuzu. The guy immediately boiled over from such treatment, and I just grinned, to myself, of course. On the face, as usual, an impenetrable mask, bye. Azula waved her hand at me and smiled sweetly. I feel the blood rush to my head from such a kawaii, bye. I just nodded my head. Bye, Zuko. Yeah. We shook hands, Zuko and Azula got into the carriage. Finally, Iroh said a couple of words to them, which I did not consider it necessary to listen to, so I retired into the house. Point two months later, Master, you have a letter. I shouted into the depths of the house. From whom? Iroh replied lazily. Of course, he's chasing tea with the servants again and playing pie show from the office of the Master of Fire. When I heard him choke on his tea, I went into the small kitchen, give it here. The master said with a lean expression on his face, here. I hand him the letter and sit down at the table. A mug of fragrant-smelling tea immediately appeared in front of me, and a pretty maid smiled at me. Thanks, ahem, the master drawled after reading the letter. What's there? I was really interested, since it's not often that someone receives letters from the office of Lord Ozai himself, eh, uh, Iroh groaned like an old man. That's the end of my vacation. Then I choked on my tea. Vacation? What? A year and a half? Where has this been seen, and, I'm being called back to the war as a general? Hmm. It's an honor, master, yeah, honor. Iroh became sad, but the next moment his trademark wide smile appeared on his face again. And it will be an honor for you, my dear disciple to accompany me and, perhaps, I will intercede for you in front of my very good friend. He's a great general, so you can learn a lot from him that I almost choked again, your mother, attention. The owner of the fire in my fike will be shown a little differently, more precisely, his character, so I don't need to write in the comments later, they say, this is not according to the canon. I turned the cannon in one place, Jin that I was riding with my master in a cart through the streets of the capital. 
To be honest, she surprised me. All the houses are tall, multi-story, everything is full of bright colors everywhere, especially red and gold colors are often found. The townspeople calmly walk the streets. Expensive clothes and arrogant faces. Some followed our transport with interest. Well, yes, not every time you can see a cart with the symbols of the owner of the fire, or rather, his family did I turned my head as much as I could. Although I was spiritually over thirty, but once in such a place, willy-nilly, you will twist your head until your neck crunches. I was interested in literally everything, people, buildings, shops, other wagons, military patrols that passed by our transport. In Kanoha, such luxury could be counted on the fingers of one hand, but here. The capital of the nation, after all, so we turn our heads, comrades, and consider everything in a row, sitting across from me, Iroh just smiled at me. Well, yes, an adult guy, but he behaves like a child, what, Jean, do you like it? Yes, master. For me, this is all. I thought, knew, I understand. Iroh looked out the window. The capital can make an impression, yes. Half an hour later, we drove into the gate of the castle of the owner of the fire. My eyes just widened. Even the Hokage residence, the tallest building in the village, was tiny compared to this giant. A scarlet and gold palace with tiled roofs. On the walls there are drawings of dragons made in gold, majestic columns, guards standing at their posts harmoniously fit into the picture of the palace. The cart stopped at the steps leading to the door, or rather the gate. And on the threshold he met us. Seeing my reaction, Iroh only shook his head with a smile. Yes, Jean, this is my brother, the fire master Ozai, Iroh. The deep bass voice of a man dressed in a luxurious outfit of scarlet heavy velvet, embroidered with gold, echoed around the neighborhood. How glad I am to see you, the man shook hands with the master, and a second later grabbed him in his arms. My jaw almost dropped. To be honest, I imagined the owner of the fire a little differently, hello, Ozai. Iroh hissed into his shoulder. To be fair, I would like to note that Ozai was a head taller than his brother and much fitter. Not a reproach to the master, since I know what this plump little man is capable of, how is your health? Have you recovered from your wounds? Yes, brother, everything is fine, thank you for your concern. Where are Azula and Zuko? Oh, they're waiting for us in the dining room. Hmm, who's that with you? The man's gaze fell on me. In order not to betray their emotions, I had to put on a mask of indifference. This is my student, Jean. Was it my imagination, or was there a note of pride in the master's voice? Yes. Ozai narrowed his eyes. Hmm, interesting. My brother doesn't take anyone as an apprentice, good afternoon, fire master, Ozai. I make a ceremonial bow. No wonder my grandfather drilled the art of etiquette into me. Oh, you're an aristocrat, aren't you? The man turned to the master, yes, this is Piendao's grandson. Ozai's eyes widened for a second, but after a moment he took control of his emotions, interesting. Putting his hand to his chin and starting to stroke the little goatee, the owner of the fire turned to his brother. So, let's not stand on the street. You must be hungry? Yes, I wouldn't mind a mug of jasmine tea. Yes, me too, brother. With a hand on Iroa's shoulder, the men headed for the palace. Jean, come on, yes, sir. Bow again. Passing through the gate, I found myself in a huge corridor. Everything screamed about the wealth of the owners and the importance of the place. Paintings, portraits, as I understood from similar facial features, ancestors, armor, curtains made of heavy satin, marble sculptures. Walking along this corridor, I threatened myself with a fracture of the cervical vertebrae. I was interested in everything. I was in the main building of the Nation of Fire. Like it or not, but it takes your breath away. 
We wandered through the corridors for about five minutes until we came to the rooms. As it turned out, the owner of the fire had already ordered the servants to arrange a room for me to rest. When I went there, I saw that all my simple belongings were already here. The room, like everything in this castle, was amazing. It was a large room, in the middle of which there was a large four-poster bed. As elsewhere, scarlet and gold tones prevailed here. A huge room that would probably fit five of my apartments. Yeah, the owner of the fire lives richly. Well, that's why he's the ruler, there was a knock on the door. Not knowing who it could be, I went to the door and opened it. Azula was standing on the threshold, good afternoon, Jean. The girl indicated a slight bow with her head. I was lower than her in origin, so I bowed my head in a bow, Princess Azula. The girl smiled. Father sent me to escort you to the dining room. The castle is big, in case you get lost. And such a sly, haughty smile. Okay, let her mock a little, if anything, I can always put her down, all right, lead the way, princess, the girl turned on her heels, whipping my hair across my face. I noticed that her ears were a little red. Grinning to myself, I closed the door and followed the girl that we walked for quite a short time, some three minutes. Corridors were replaced by corridors. Yes, if it wasn't for Azula, then I could have gotten lost here. As mentioned earlier, either portraits or paintings hung on the walls. And then one of them hooked me. I stopped in front of a painting that depicted a faceless fire master with a dragon wrapped around his neck. The reptile's muzzle was in line with the human eyes. Azula, apparently sensing that I had stopped, turned around. Slowly coming up to me, she stood next to me. So we stood around the painting for a minute, in silence. But soon the silence was broken by the girl, did your father paint this picture? The girl asked almost in a whisper, I just nodded my head silently. He was a real master of his craft. I felt a lump in my throat. Overpowering myself, I answered but his skill did not help him to protect his mother and himself. The girl looked at me reproachfully, but I ignored her, unable to take my eyes off the picture. I won't let him make mistakes, good words, young man. We turned around. At the end of the corridor stood Lord Ozai. There was a faint smile on his face. He walked slowly towards us. Standing in front of the painting, he sighed. Your father was a genius. I bought not one painting from him, but several, only it was not advertised, why, he asked me about it. Why? I don't know. Ozai shrugged and then put his hand on my shoulder. I know from Iroh that you have great potential. If you want to protect your loved ones, your people, then I suggest you enlist in the ranks of our great army. I wanted to do it anyway, well done. If you want, I can conduct separate tests for you. You can get the rank of an officer right away, and then it's not far to the general, according to my brother, thank you but it's not worth it. I lowered my head. I will achieve everything myself, yes, Iroh was not mistaken in you. You're going to go far, Jean. I turned to face the smiling Ozai. I will wait for the moment when I can personally elevate you to the rank of general. These are such prospects, on the way to the dining room, the owner of the fire described to me what I could get by becoming a general. It turns out that the generals are given a solid allotment of land. That's just the house and everything else will have to be built yourself, with your hard-earned money. Alas, this is true, but there is nothing to worry about, since generals receive a pretty large salary. If we compare the monthly salary of a general and an ordinary ordinary soldier, it turns out that in order for a soldier to match the monthly income of a general, he will have to work for about six months. It's a pretty big breakup, isn't it, but the whole point here is that if a person wants to become a general, then. So, let's not start with this, there are two ways to become a general, next comes my career ladder for the military, so don't be indignant, curry favor. You need to prove yourself in battle, 
and show yourself so that you are noticed. Five awards and you are an officer of the first rank. Five awards in the rank of a first rank officer, which are naturally more difficult to get, and you are a second rank officer. Five more awards in the status of an officer of the second rank and you are an officer of the third rank. After the third rank comes the rank of commander. Well, after the rank of commander, the general himself, the second method is easier and more difficult at the same time. You need to pass an exam with other generals, of whom there are only nine people in the army. They are also called the Council of Generals. The Council also has ranks. As you understand, from the first to the ninth. The strongest and smartest is in the first place. Well, after him, the others are already coming. Why is it simple? Because you don't need to curry favor in battles, but just pass the exam with the generals. Why is it difficult? Because no one has been able to do it yet. I don't even know why he, the exam, is still being held, so to speak, in service, guess how I want to get the rank of general? Aha, uh -huh, you didn't guess. I will achieve everything myself, without any roundabout ways. So go ahead, to the rank of a soldier, to become a soldier, you just need to come to the volunteer registration point or contact the military directly. Don't think that the army consists only of volunteers. Of course not. Every year a population census is conducted and 10% of men and boys are taken into the army. But do not shout that it is wrong to forcibly take into the army. There is such a program as contentment. According to this program, the family of a soldier who was taken into the army becomes registered. Every month she is given a sum of money, according to the number of family members. But hear attention. Members of not the whole family. Moms, dads, grandparents are not included here, only the wife and children. Yes, this is strict, but otherwise the state would be on the verge of a crisis. Therefore, there are enough volunteers in the army. It's funny that the general, officers and commanders are also given a surcharge, although they receive substantial sums for their service. Oh, yes, you're going to say that now, the generals are just sitting in the headquarters and drinking tea. No. It is difficult to become a general, but it is even more difficult to be one. During the war, generals fight together with soldiers, but they are not called the strongest and most experienced for nothing. You go and try to take down the general. He'll twist you into a ram's horn and won't wince. According to statistics written by one of the generals two centuries ago, there are from 200 enemy soldiers per general. Think about this figure. From 200. Not before, but from and it is not yet a fact that they will be able to win. From the rumors and the vivid example of my sensei and grandfather, I can say that the generals are still monsters. By the way, yes, my master is on the council. There he takes, attention, only the third place. Do you understand? The famous dragon of the west takes only the third place. There are two more. I sparred with the master at his full strength. To be honest, I barely took my feet off the landfill. I was just an unpretentiously almost killed there, fuck. And he's only the third. I'm even afraid to imagine how strong the first one is. But never mind, I'll get the first place on the council. I will be able to protect the people close to me. I'll tear my veins, but I can. We just need to get stronger. The master told me that I am now at the level of the tenth member of the council, even if I were slightly stronger than the commanders, but also weaker than the ninth. We went into the dining room, where the whole family of the owner of the fire was sitting. Zuko, Aero, and Ursa, Ozai's wife and the mother of his children. The table was not set yet, it seems that everyone was waiting only for us. Ursa smiled sweetly at me, I returned her bow, but more respectfully, I had to bend almost ninety degrees, dear, let me introduce you to this young man. Ozai said cheerfully as soon as I straightened up, of course, dear. 
Now I understand who Azula took after, if not in character, then in appearance for sure. You know, there is a saying, if you want to know what a woman will look like, look at her mother. And here I understand that Azula will have no end of noble suitors. If she looks like her mother, then, it's better not to think about it. This young man is Piendao's grandson. Ursa's eyes widened a little, and she herself drew herself up like a lioness ready to pounce on her prey. I felt a little uncomfortable under such a look. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed how Azula snorted with displeasure, but the reddened tips of her ears, uncovered by her hair, turned slightly red. A master of the sword, who is in no way inferior, and maybe surpasses his grandfather, in skill. The guy is smart and young, so he decided to enlist in the ranks of our army, hmm, interesting. The woman smiled again and beckoned me with her finger that I walked up to the table in silence. What's your name, young man? Ursa's voice enveloped consciousness like honey, it was so gentle and melodious, Jean, Sato Jean how old are you? The woman got up from her seat and started walking around me. Standing straight and not looking around, I answered. I'm sixteen, mistress, hmm, height and weight? What? Height, 180 centimeters, weight, 80 kg, hmm, you will grow up to be a strong, healthy, and strong man. Ursa gave the verdict. What the fuck is going on here, yes, mistress? The voice didn't waver. Although I was struck by hee hee. It feels like you're at a doctor's appointment, ha ha ha. The woman covered her mouth with the sleeve of her kimono. You must be wondering why I asked you about such things just now, yes, mistress. Well, Jean Kuhn, I'll tell you honestly. Soon my daughter will reach the age when she will be able to choose her fiancé. Should I continue further? The woman smiled slyly. And here is such a nice young man who is clearly not deprived of intelligence and talents, otherwise Iroh would not have taken you to his students. Let's not forget that you are also from a noble family, and your grandfather is not the last person in the Nation of Fire. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Yes, mistress. And only one phrase turns in my head, which, I feel, will become my constant companion, your mother, so, hello everyone. About a month has passed since that momentous dinner. What can I say about this segment of my life, all this time I was either in the palace or in the barracks. Yes, yes, you heard right. I became a soldier after all. But what's strange is that when I was signed up as a volunteer, I didn't experience any special emotions, although before that it was my dream to become a soldier. Strange? I do not argue but I cannot explain to myself such twists of my psyche that it wasn't so bad in the army. Three meals a day, and very plentiful. The army got very high quality products. And in general, almost everything is the best. It was obvious that the owner of the fire was taking care of his soldiers. But preparation is a completely separate topic, so, the schedule we had was this, rise at six o'clock. This was followed by a cross as a warm-up. Ran five kilometers? Well done, you deserve breakfast, and if you didn't run, then, alas, you don't want to eat so much, so please go and follow the following instructions of the commanders, while everyone else who coped with the task will eat. After breakfast, well, who got it, we were driven to the offices. There we learned the theory of warfare, operations, tactics of action by a detachment or a loner, physiology, psychology, mathematics, statutes, history, platoon compositions, and the like. We were loaded with material mercilessly. Sometimes my head just swelled from the information that was dumped on us. Moreover, if the next day you do not tell by heart everything that you were told in the last lesson, then you lose, for the first time, daytime sleep, for the second, the only weekend of the week. It was powerful, I'll tell you. Well, it's not about that now. Theoretical classes lasted four hours, after which we were kicked out of classes to the landfills. 
There, as we were told, the first months will determine what each soldier is capable of and where it will be better to determine him. The enforcer, the magician, or the magician enforcer. Oh, yes, I forgot to say that the ability of a soldier to wield fire magic was also determined there. If the magician's reserve allowed him to fight a long battle, then he was identified as magicians, if not, then as security forces, soldiers who do not use magic in battle. But the magician enforcer is a completely different topic. In order to be signed up as a mage enforcer, you had to have a huge reserve and stamina. Specially for this purpose, a special training ground was equipped, where the soldier had to release his magic as long as possible, and then go and perform strength exercises, when I passed this test, I was carried out of the training ground on a stretcher. After that, I lay in the infirmary for about half a day, because during the test I earned myself a complete depletion of the magical reserve and was so tired that I could not move a finger. But the inspectors were very happy with such a replenishment, since the army was based on magicians, then there were security forces, well, least of all there were us, security magicians. Not everyone could pass this test that we were chased like dogs at the training grounds. We ran, jumped, did push-ups, pulled up, engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I can safely say that in hand-to-hand -hand combat and sword fighting, I was ahead of the whole planet. That's what life-giving workouts with Grandpa do. By the way, Piendao was one of the most revered soldiers in the army, although some considered him a deserter when he left the ranks of soldiers, but there were a minority of such. For the rest, he was a real idol, and when they found out that I was his grandson, there was no end of those who wanted to get to know me. After classes at the training grounds there was lunch, and after lunch there was sleep. Some particularly unprepared guys and men simply fell on their beds after eating and immediately fell asleep, as the load on the mind and body was simply incredible. But this is only at first. A month later, many got used to it, so those who crawled to the beds like a mummy were no longer there. Well, or almost none, there was one kid who was about a year younger than me. His name was Wong. So he was so frail that I constantly helped him crawl to bed. I was amazed at his tenacity. The guy, like me, volunteered to join the ranks of soldiers, voluntarily agreed to the hell that was happening here. Once we had a dialogue, Wong, can it be enough already? I helped the kid put his carcass in the bunk. You'd rather drive yourself to the grave that way than become a soldier. I'm sorry, Jean, but I can't. A blissful smile spread on the guy's face when he was able to lie down on the bed. You'll ruin your health. Why do you need it? I have, Ka. Wong coughed. I have my mother and sister at home, no one else. The mother is ill and cannot work. We need money for treatment, and here, I hear, they pay well. After calculating, I realized that I would need to serve in the army for several years to save money and take my mother to a healer. How much do you need? A thousand yen. Wang grimaced. Dot, wow, a lot. Yes, that's why I signed up as a volunteer. So far, my sister is taking care of my mother to whom I give half of the allowance that we are paid here. They have enough, but I'm not starving here that hmm. I was thinking so hard. Wong is a good guy, but for me a thousand yen is not a problem. Wong, listen that there. The guy turned his head to me that I will give you the amount you need for your mother's treatment. So to speak, on credit, so that you don't relax, what? He groaned and tried to get up on his elbows, but I put him back on the bed uh, yes, I'll help you. Jin. I don't know what to say. Tears began to come to the guy's eyes. A simple thank you will be enough. Well, in this simple way, I'll tie the guy to me. The feeling of gratitude for a rescued relative is not a pood of salt uh, thank you, thank you very much. The boy grabbed my hand and began to shake it actively, simultaneously twisting such a face on his face that I could not keep the laughter in myself that that's about how I got my first friend. Don't think I bought it, 
although it may seem so, but no. I just helped the guy and his family. Moreover, Wong promised to give me all the money. After sleep, we were training again until 8 o'clock, and then we had free time. We usually spent this time memorizing material from lessons, but we also had time to do other things. Wash and tidy up the uniform, clean up the workplace, chat or play with colleagues and much more. So two years flew by unnoticed. I'm 18 now. I am considered an adult, so the bosses start sending us to various field exits, where the opportunity to stumble upon enemy soldiers is quite great. Personally, I have already visited five such exits. Our tasks were not that difficult, but it was difficult to call them easy either. Reconnaissance, border patrol, extermination of robbers, escort of caravans. The tasks were different. We usually carried them out in platoons. There were 50 men in the platoon. Platoons, like other units, were either of the same type or mixed. I was constantly in a mixed platoon. We had 20 Siloviki, 20 magicians, and 10 magician Siloviki. Most of all, I loved the border patrol. It was a week long trip to the border. I had a platoon under my command. More recently, According to the results of unplanned field exams, I was entrusted with the command of a platoon. To be honest, it was a huge step. I was given a chance to test myself as a commander. According to the results of the tasks that the bosses of our sector set for us, my further advancement on the career ladder depended, why was I entrusted to command a platoon? I'll explain now. This happened quite recently. About a month ago, I, as part of a platoon of soldiers, being an ordinary infantryman, went on a mission. The same notorious border patrol. Everything was fine at first. We arrived, we were assigned a sector where we will patrol the territory. Having moved away from the front headquarters, we must not forget that we are in strained relations with all states, we camped on the border section. For the first two days everything was quiet, but on the third day misunderstandings began. At first, when we woke up in the morning, we did not find one sentry. After sending a report to the headquarters of the Falcon, we began the search for the missing. The soldier was found five kilometers from the camp, beyond the border of the country of fire, on neutral territory. He was dead. Having raised the alarm in the camp, we strengthened the patrol and night duty. The third day has passed. Everything was quiet at night. On the fifth day, the camp was attacked. The soldiers of the land of the earth sneaked into the camp at night and killed our commander without touching anyone else. I had the feeling that they were playing with us like a cat with a mouse. Everyone in the platoon knew me. They knew what I was capable of. That's why they spontaneously appointed me commander. After sending the report to the headquarters, I received the following instructions. If possible, capture the attackers, if this fails, kill them. It was necessary to hold out until the approach of another platoon sent to reinforce us. It was a day's journey to our camp at a fast pace, but I didn't really hope for reinforcements. You'll have to do everything yourself, with your platoon. Well, I'm not used to it. On the sixth day, immediately after receiving the letter from the headquarters, I actively started digging up the camp. A moat was dug around it, which I and a couple of other magicians burned with flames. Since the ground was almost all sand, the surface of the moat was covered with a thin crust of glass. If you break it, there will be an extremely unpleasant sound, as if a fork is being driven on the glass so it has become much more difficult to get to us from below unnoticed. On the surface, we drove stakes into the ground, placing them around the perimeter of the entire camp. A fishing line was stretched on the stakes, to which all the strumming objects that they could find were tied. If the line is touched, then we will hear and have time to react. I also thought of filling the moat with flame, putting one magician enforcer in meditation, to maintain the flame. The magicians will have to take turns so that the flame does not go out. 
Yes, it unmasks, but the camp itself is not that it was too inconspicuous, so we don't lose much from it that we have put up what obstacles we could. It remained only to wait. It was clear that there was a detachment of magician saboteurs of the land of the earth on our border, so it was necessary to lure them into a trap and exterminate them, if possible taking a couple of prisoners for interrogation. The first half of the day passed calmly, no one saw anything suspicious, but I constantly reminded my people not to lose their vigilance and not to relax. They followed my instructions without question, for which I was very grateful to them, since our lives and the successful completion of the task depended on their and my vigilance. I was rightly afraid of the earth magicians, as I had seen enough of what they had done to the inhabitants of my village as a child. It was enough for me to get a strong dislike for them that I in the afternoon, when the soldiers had already had lunch, I changed the sentries, letting them rest, and I went to inspect the camp. At first, everything was pretty decent. Our traps were not broken anywhere. But now, approaching my tent, I saw a small, barely noticeable path where the ground was slightly raised. It was a characteristic sign of the underground navigation of the earth magicians. Oh, shit. I swore in a whisper. Slowly, trying not to betray myself, I drew my sword from its scabbard. Quietly approaching the tent, I lifted the edge of the canvas with the tip of my sword, seeing the back of a man in a green uniform and with a large hat of the same color as the vest. He was so engrossed in digging through my documents that he did not immediately hear a rustle behind him. In one powerful step, I overcame the distance separating us and struck at the carotid artery, instantly cutting off the enemy magician. I was wildly lucky that he didn't notice me before, otherwise I could have had problems. Turning over the fallen magician, I saw that it was a guy who maybe was a little older than me, he looked too young. Having stopped looking at him, I tied his hands and feet behind his back, joining them together so that he certainly could not conjure in any way. Coming out of the tent, I called the attendant to, two to me, quickly. He instantly understood everything and, calling out to someone, got back to his post. That's right, it's not a good idea to leave your place to, sir, what do you have? Two soldiers who ran into my tent stopped in mid-sentence when they saw the bound magician to, send a message to the headquarters. I hope this will hurry them up. There is. One of the soldiers ran outside. Soon his footsteps faded. And you help me put him on a chair, together we put the prisoner on a chair, putting metal shackles on his hands. Well, shall we start the interrogation? I asked my assistant. Yes, sir. He nodded his head and patted the sleeping beauty on the cheeks that, hmm, he doesn't wake up. We need something more effective. I looked around. Then my gaze fell on the sword. Heh, now someone will be very hurt. Let's deprive you of a second sight. With these words, I took my sword and lit a fire on my hand. Having heated the blade, I applied it to the prisoner's feet. There was smoke, and the tent smelled unpleasantly of burnt meat. The prisoner immediately woke up and screamed in pain. My assistant gave him a hard blow to the solar plexus, and then prescribed it to the jaw. The scream was interrupted, the prisoner was now only moaning in pain. I felt no pity, and neither did the soldier that, hmm, sorry, I forgot to ask. What's your name, Lin, Mao Lin, sir? Great, Lin, I like your approach to business. Well, go on, and I'll watch. There is. The guy approached the prisoner and grabbed him by the chin, forcing him to look straight into his eyes. Name? How many of you are there? Where is your camp? The purpose of your mission, the prisoner was silent, only casting quick glances around, filled with hatred, instantly oriented, Lin took out a small box with a set of needles and, without hurrying to ask questions, said, hold his face. One eye is superfluous for him that, okay, I nodded, fulfilling the request of the fighter, Mao, without showing emotion, stuck one of the needles into the pupil of the magician, and then pressed it deeper, 
then abruptly pulled it out. The prisoner at this time was only howling, trying to pull his face out of my grip. Keeping a magician, by the way, turned out to be quite difficult at, will you answer the question, die, after the prisoner's answer, Lin, still keeping his face stony, began to stick needles under his toenails, ignoring the screams that quickly turned into screams. I also had to assist the fighter by holding the magician's limbs. He, despite the pain, held on and was in no hurry to talk about his mission and the number of his group, if there is one at all, when it turned out that there were no whole toes left on his feet, Lin sighed and said, apparently, he doesn't need a second eye. Yes, and the language, since it does not want to speak that, that's enough. Suddenly the magician breathed out, I'll say, speak in quickly, and my name is Shiv. Our squad consists of ten people, all earth magicians. The camp is on neutral territory. We d have to find a gap in the border for the main forces to advance. Dot, great. My assistant's voice softened. See, it wasn't that hard. Sir, do it. I nodded my head, marveling at the guy's unexpected abilities in interrogation and torture. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised that there is. Lin snatched the needle more comfortably and drove it into the soldier's ear in one motion. I just raised an eyebrow at his actions. I don't want to get blood on your tent, sir. Da, hmm, well done. I nodded. Get rid of the garbage that there is. The guy came out of the tent. Soon two more soldiers entered it, untied the body from the chair. Picking him up, they carried the body to the moat and threw it into the flames. The body will burn quickly. Da, Lin, we need to send a report. Another one for this day. I sat down wearily on the chair on which the prisoner had recently saddled and wiped the sweat from my forehead. Sit down, and I'll take care of the report, then send it. Yes, sir. The guy stood at attention, and then, pulling a chair to the entrance, sat down on it. So, well, let's go. It took half an hour to fill out the report. I described everything that happened here separately noting the sergeant and his skills. I think he will be thanked or paid a little more. Yes, not the point. When I finished writing, I leaned back in my chair, crunching my back. Sergeant. Yes, sir. The guy slowly got up from his chair and, adjusting his glasses, came up to me. I just grinned at his laziness. Somehow he reminds me of Shikamaru. Eh, how are they there, I wonder, here, send this to headquarters. With these words, I hold out a rolled up parchment that there is. Taking the scroll, the guy left the tent and wandered to the postal falcons. I liked these birds, I'm even thinking of taking one for my personal use. And what? Ozai has, and what's worse for me? No, well, it's clear what, but it doesn't change the essence that, sir. I sent the report. The sergeant's long-haired head looked into the tent. Dot, great. Getting up from the chair and throwing on a soldier's jacket, I left the tent. Lin, General Assembly, do not touch the sentries. Dot, there is, five minutes later, all my fighters, consisting of forty people, are standing in front of me, the sentries were standing at their posts, diligently watching. It's a pity for our commander and that sentry, but this is war nothing can be done. Dot, so, fighters. I give Tsu. We need to rest, because I feel they won't let us do this until reinforcements arrive. We will sleep during the day, there will be no such luxury at night. I don't know why this is so, but just trust my chukka. Don't tell them that I'm a professional killer with many years of experience. The headquarters responded to us by sending more people to help, but before they arrive, we need to survive and hold this sector at any cost. I forbid anyone to die. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Or forty gulps slightly stunned me to, great. I clapped my hands. Sergeant Mao Lin, I, get out of line that, there is. The guy took three steps forward that, all around. Lin turned to face his colleagues. 
This is Sergeant Mao Lin, if anyone doesn't know. I'm appointing him as my assistant. Obey his orders like mine. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The harmonious chorus again slightly stunned me that, then now I give you ten minutes to finish all your business. After this time, I want to see how you will sniff in all three holes. Rest, guys, while you have the opportunity. Everyone is free. Lin, come to me, sir. The guy straightened up to, make sure that everyone goes to bed, change the guards and go to bed yourself, I will be on duty in the camp itself to, yes, sir. Da, that's it, I'm free to, sir, may I ask a question? Yes, what about you? Will you be resting? The guy's face showed a slight concern for his superiors in the person of me to, I'll rest, Lin, I'll rest, but later. That's it, go and follow the order. There is. The sergeant nodded and rode off to the camp. It will be two difficult days, the first five hours of sleep of my wards were calm. Utter silence hung over the camp. Only the singing of birds in the distance could be heard. But such an idol cannot last forever. So the peaceful sleep of the soldiers is over. It ended very unusually. Such a healthy boulder flew into our camp. Fortunately, he did not get into any tent, otherwise I would not have given any guarantees that the soldiers could survive after such a gift, the boulder landed in the camp with a crash, so much so that I felt the earth tremble. Naturally, everyone jumped up from their heated futons at once. At that time I was making another round of the camp and saw this flying stone. Get up. Everyone stood up quickly. I shouted as loudly as I could. Although, as I said earlier, my scream was not needed here, since everyone already understood what was happening. Attack. Sir, what are your orders? The fighters lined up in front of me in a row, while Lin stood a little closer to me. So, as you understand, we are completely fucked. If we don't repel this attack before reinforcements arrive, then the shrews will be able to strengthen themselves in this area. There will be a breakthrough in the border. It's not good for us at all that we are acting according to this plan. Since we comply with the agreements, we will not enter neutral territory. We catch live bait. We have to lure these assholes to our camp and kill them here or capture them. Although one or two languages will be enough, which we will take with us to the headquarters. I plan to be replaced with the reinforcements that are coming to us. We need to hold out until their approach. Do you understand? Yes, sir, great. Then I want to ask you. Who would be willing to stay here as bait? I need volunteers, I won't involve anyone by force. I'll give you a minute to think. Dot, sir, one of the soldiers turned to me after the allotted time for reflection. We are all ready to do our duty. Dot, I am glad to hear these words. Then count on the first or second. The first numbers stay in the camp, depicting increased panic and confusion, and the second ones go with me. We'll be setting up an ambush not far from the camp. There is, good luck to you, with these words, I took the second numbers and went outside the camp. I hope my plan will work. It is impossible to allow a breakthrough of the border, having found the right place not far from the camp, from where he himself was visible, we settled down. The hardest thing in such a task is to wait. I was frankly scared for my fighters, who entrusted their lives to me. I will try not to let them down that we sat for about an hour. Everything was calm, but then shouts and flashes of flame began to be heard from the camp. The soldiers murmured and got ready. I tensed up. You need to wait for the moment to cover all the shrews at once. We need them all to be in the camp. Sir, we are waiting for your order, but there was no response. Dot, sir? One of the fighters already spoke excitedly. Dot, I hear you, fighter. We're waiting. Dot, that's right. Dot, go ahead. I whispered, after five minutes everyone rushed to the camp at once. Starting from a low start, I grabbed the hilt of my sword, ready to pull it out at any moment running into the camp, my wards immediately attacked the soldiers of the Earth Army, 
who surrounded our compatriots. Some were badly battered by the fight, many had bruises and bruises, there was blood, but we must give them all their due, they stood on their feet and still tried to fight back. A short fight, and now we are knitting two shrews. The rest were wasted, because we would not have taken them all without losses, and soldiers are more expensive to me than incomprehensible information. That everyone did a great job, well done. Lin, yes, sir, to provide medical assistance to the victims, to arrange with all comfort. The rest, spread out along the borders of the camp. We will wait for reinforcements. Yes, sir. The soldiers answered in chorus. Great, do it, the time before the reinforcements arrived passed unnoticed. We were all overloaded with cases. It was necessary to restore the camp, remove the bodies, provide medical assistance and proper care for the victims, write a report on the work done, which, then, be sent to the headquarters. Poor birds, they're probably already tired of flying back and forth, but what can you do, that's the job that I personally visited all the wounded, thanked them for their service, promised that I would put in a good word for them in front of higher ranks. The soldiers were pleased and thanked me strenuously. Well, of course, a promotion in rank is an increase in the salary that they are given, which means that it will be possible to feed the family normally, if there is one, or to posh on leave and have fun with the girls, and so, a couple of hours later, our reinforcements appeared on the horizon. And it hasn't been a year since they showed up. There was absolutely nothing left to wait, so I hurried to get myself in order so as not to appear before the authorities like a pig, yes, I didn't have time for this before, because I was all in business. Oh, how I missed the soft bed in the royal palace, and the soft pillow. We're all tired as hell here. They gave their all. The first combat skirmish for all my fighters. They are still very young guys, and they have already tasted blood, although not all, but many participated in it and showed themselves on the good side. Well, you don't have to look at me, I'm as calm as a boa constrictor. I didn't do this in my past life, so I don't worry much about someone else's life being taken away because I'm used to it. Sato Jean? A fighter with the rank of lieutenant addressed me. Yes, it's me, I had to straighten up to attention, since in fact I was still a simple sergeant. This is so, for a short period of time, my fighters pushed me forward in rank so that I would command them. My name is Yuzuki Ran. Here is a letter from the headquarters, read it. I took the scroll that the lieutenant handed me, hmm. Sato Jean, la la la. You are ordered to return to the location of the unit, la la la. I'm taking all the fighters with me, la la la. Oh. I was given a new title. It's strange. Why was this expressed in the letter? Ah. Got it. So that I now have real power over the soldiers, and then you never know what and the lieutenant's bars themselves will be given to me at headquarters. Yeah, good. Will do. Yeah, take the prisoners with you. Yeah, we're swapping with the new arrivals. Spirit, like everything d great, I'm a lieutenant now. I muttered to myself, but the fighter who handed me the letter heard. Dot, congratulations, Sato, on your new rank, thanks. I scratched the back of my head uncertainly, as I had done in a previous life. You've had a hard time here, as I look, raising my head, I saw that my colleague was looking at the stretchers with the wounded. Yeah, that's for sure. It seems to be everyone who was, so. But you still keep your ear sharp, just in case. Okay, thanks for the advice. By the way, the lieutenant slid off his lizard, on which he had been sitting up to that time and ordered his soldiers to dismount. These lizards are at your disposal. They really want to see you at the headquarters, since they have been generous with these handsome men. With these words, he patted the neck of one lizard, which purred contentedly, like a cat. Oh, that's just great. The wounded need professional medical care, so the sooner we get there, the better it will be for them. That's right. Well, good luck to you. The lieutenant held out his hand to me. Thank you, and you. 
I returned the handshake. Mao. I called my assistant over. Yes, sir, I was given the official rank of lieutenant. Congratulations on your promotion, sir. The sergeant smiled easily. So, Mao, let's not have these sirs. You can also call me by my first name. I waved it off. Yes, sir, uh. I mean, Jean. That's better. Load the wounded onto the lizards. We're moving out in ten minutes. All right, Jean. Mao ran away to carry out the order, and I reread the letter again. Well, the first step to the rank of the first general has been passed. It remains to get a captain, and then the ninth general is just around the corner. Dot, sir. We've done everything. The wounded are on the lizards, they are securely fastened. The prisoners are tied up, one of the soldiers is attached to each of them. We are ready for the nomination. Dot, one of the fighters reported. Dot, great, everyone to the lizards, let's move out. I shouted so that all the soldiers could hear me. Dot, there is. They answered in chorus and climbed onto their transport, the road to the headquarters took exactly a day. We had to make short passes to give the wounded a break from the shaking, and we ourselves needed to rest, eat, go to the need and all that. In the evening of the next day, we were already near the borders of the unit, from where we were sent on patrol. We were met by medics with stretchers, who immediately dragged the wounded into medical tents, and drove the free fighters to rest. I was caught by the higher ranks and dragged to report to the authorities. Sato Jean, I give you the lieutenant's bars, wear them with pride and do not let down the land of fire and Lord Ohai. One of the captains said pathetically, pinning straps on my collar. I will honorably fulfill my duty, Lord Ozaya and the land of fire will be proud of me. I rattled off the phrase I learned at the academy when receiving a new title. To, okay, it's over. The captain sat down with his other two colleagues and stared at me questioningly. Tell me, lieutenant, what happened there. Dot, there is. I went to the map. We, as it was said, camped on our section of the border. For the first two days everything was calm, the patrol did not notice anyone, no one crossed the border, but on the third day there were oddities. Dot, explain, lieutenant. One of the captains said sternly. Dot, at first, when we woke up in the morning, we did not find one sentry. After sending a report to the headquarters of the Falcon, we began the search for the missing. The soldier was found five kilometers from the camp, beyond the border of the country of fire, on neutral territory. He was dead. Having raised the alarm in the camp, we strengthened the patrol and night duty. The third day has passed. Everything was quiet at night. On the fifth day, the camp was attacked. The soldiers of the land of the earth sneaked into the camp at night and killed our commander without touching anyone else. To, next, to, everyone in the platoon knew me, knew who I was, that's why they put forward a proposal for a general vote to appoint me in charge until the arrival of higher ranks. The captains have made notes in their scrolls, obviously they will have to write reports to higher ranks. On the sixth day, Immediately after receiving the letter from the headquarters, I actively began to take measures to protect the camp. A moat was dug, the walls of which were burned by the flame to the state of glass. Rattles were placed. Duh, rattles? The captain looked at me in bewilderment. Duh, rattles, sir. A fishing line is stretched on two stakes, ringing objects are planted on the fishing line. When touching the fishing line, objects begin to strum. I called it a rattle to, hmm, an interesting idea, lieutenant, it will go into your personal business, as an active aid to the army of the land of fire. Thank you, sir. Hmm, very good. Such bonds will help to advance. Go ahead, lieutenant. In the afternoon, an earth mage entered my tent. How did he get around your traps? I can't know. Hmm. The old man sneered contemptuously. The saboteur managed to be taken alive and interrogated. All information about the interrogation was stated and a letter was sent to the headquarters. Yes, we know and have already familiarized ourselves with the contents. What happened to the prisoner, killed? 
I will ask you to pay attention to Sergeant Mao Lin. He has established himself as an executive person. It was he who interrogated the prisoner, and then finished him off. I would like to recommend him as an interrogation specialist. If possible, then assign it to me. Well, we'll think about it further. An hour later, after the report was sent, I gathered the fighters and outlined the situation to them, sent them to rest. Six hours later, the attack on the camp began that I went into an ambush with some of my subordinates, and the remaining soldiers were bait. The magicians of the land of the earth fell for this trick. We managed to take them without losses, but those who were in the ambush suffered. Then reinforcements arrived and I, having made a replacement, together with my platoon went here. That's it. All right, lieutenant. We are giving you and your fighters four days of rest. Wounded, a week. And then you have to come here for a new assignment. Dot. Let me ask. Dot. Ask away. Dot. Is it allowed to go beyond the location of the unit? Yes, everyone, rest, lieutenant. You and your soldiers are doing well. Dot. Thank you, sir. Bowing, I left, few, freedom for four whole days. You will need to go to Aero to show off the new bars. In the meantime, we need to visit the fighters and please them with a short vacation. Dot. So, listen to me carefully. I immediately began, as soon as I entered the tent where my soldiers were stationed. So, I'll start with the fact that I was officially given the rank of lieutenant. Thank you, after waiting out the ovation, I continued. We were given a short vacation for four days. A hubbub of joyful voices rose in the tent. Quiet. Listen to the rest first, and then rejoice. Our wounded comrades will rest for a week, they deserve it, further. In four days we will be given a new task, but as I understand it, we will go to it as an incomplete platoon, so everyone will be rested and whole in this tent in four days. Is everything clear to everyone? Any questions? Sir, it turns out that you are our commander now, yes, it turns out that it is. That's it, nothing else? Then everyone disperse, have a good rest, thank you, sir, you too. The soldier waved at me. That bitch, no subordination, although, if you remember me in his years in the past world. Yeah, I'd rather keep quiet. What was it worth just one appeal? Granny Sunade, to the head of our village. Yes, and such, nicknames, allow you to strengthen friendly relations with soldiers that I want them to consider me a friend, a brother, and not just a commander. I will put together a gang, an elite squad, which I dreamed of in a previous life. In the likeness of ANBU. Good luck. I said and waved my hand and left the tent, now you will need to get to Ozai's palace. So, where is my lizard? I think the command will not be offended if I borrow it. I really like this handsome man, especially since traveling on him is a pleasure. Well, hello. Hmm, I need to give you a name. I said, stroking the lizard's scaly face. He just vibrated quite and stuck out his forked tongue, tickling my hand. Hmm, I think you will be Karama. Of course, you're not so big and fluffy, but you're still useful. Okay, I'll ask you from Ozai. Let's go, we took off abruptly, heading towards the Fire Lord's palace that we got there in just two hours. This, I'll tell you, is pretty fast. It would take me at least six hours to get there on foot. Oh well, when I entered the palace gates, I started turning my head again. The guards who knew me let me through without question. The sea of red and gold, the palace is simply awe-inspiring, although it's not the first time I've seen it, but it still takes my breath away, courtiers, walking steadily through gardens and bridges overhanging small rivers, ponds with fish that now and then jump out of the water, shining with bright scales in the glare of the sun, magnificent trees spreading their branches, and I'm on my lizard. Thank Kami that at least he managed to change his uniform for the front. I had it clean, because if I hadn't brought Kami, I would have come here in a dirty and singed uniform. To be honest, I don't really like this dress uniform. She's kind of sad. 
absolutely red, and I want something more catchy, something that will catch the eye against the background of the environment. But in order to be listened to and allowed to create my dress uniform, I need to try hard and become at least the ninth general.so go ahead, plow and do feats, that's the end of it.